welcome back to another video on my channel. I hope you're doing good, I hope you're doing well. And just like that, it's only gone and, and, uh, and been match day five of the AFCON 2023 qualifiers. Of course, the tournament was meant to actually be happening, if you remember, this summer. The only reason it got pushed back a few months was, uh, first of all, it was related to the, um, the host not being fully ready, Ivory Coast, and secondly, the five African sides that went to the World Cup wanted more time to prepare for the World Cup, so they had to delay the qualifiers for the whole continent. So here we are. So around about six, seven months away from the competition kicking off. This is a huge match day for a lot of nations. This fixture, it's just the one fixture taking place, um, and a lot of other teams are playing a friendly game as well, will decide if they go to AFCON or if they don't. All fixtures taking place from June 14 to uh, June 20. So within a week in June, we're going to have a pretty good idea of who's going to be going to the Africa Cup of Nations. We start off with South Sudan taking on Gambia. Now, South Sudan, strictly speaking, are not eliminated from this qualification campaign, but Gambia and Congo locked in on six points each. We have two games to go. Gambia have to go to South Sudan, they have to go to Juba, and they have to win. They've got to win that game, and they've also got to hope in the other game that uh, Mali gets something against Congo. Even though Congo are the host for that game, officially, in Brazzaville, Gambia will be needing to win and hoping Mali don't um, lose that game. So it's going to be close. I don't think South Sudan will make it. It'll be an unbelievable story, by the way, if they did make it. But it's tough. I think it's still between Congo and Gambia. If Gambia go to South Sudan and win, and Mali win in Congo, it really does put Gambia in the driving seat, needing just one point in the final game at home. So keep an eye on how that group goes. Sao Tome and Principe are playing against Guinea-Bissau. Now the irony of this game is that even though Sao Tome and Principe are the home team and Guinea-Bissau are the away team, the game's being played in Guinea-Bissau. That's right, that is Africa for you. Sierra, Le Sierra Leone will be fuming about that because if Guinea-Bissau win this game again, they are in the real driving seat to qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations for the fourth time in a row, something they've never done before. Now, considering Nigeria beat Sao Tome and Principe 10 0 away and uh, Sierra Leone failed to beat them, you'd expect Guinea Bissau playing away, but it's basically at home to, uh, <laughs> to get something in that game. Um, I think Guinea Bissau will get that second spot up, up above Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone in the other game are playing against Nigeria. Now, We've seen before, these two have played each other and been very entertaining, closer than people think. Once Nigeria were 4-0 up, and uh, Sierra Leone brought it back to 4-4. The problem is, I think Guinea-Bissau will win easily. I think even if Sierra Leone were to beat Nigeria, there'd still be a two-point gap going into that final game. So Guinea-Bissau would probably host uh, Sierra Leone in the last game. So it really is going to be tough to see Sierra Leone qualify out of this, this uh, qualification, which of course... Good news for Algeria because they failed to beat them in the opening game of the last tournament, which was annoying a lot of people. Guinea facing Egypt, probably one of the ties of the round. Um, this, again, not happening in Guinea. This is happening in Marrakesh. A lot of the games will be happening in, in, uh, in Morocco. Cass' favourite neutral venue is seen. Now, Guinea and Egypt on nine. Malawi and Ethiopia are on three. So pretty much, if Egypt and Guinea just kick the ball about in Marrakesh for 90 minutes and draw... They will both qualify for the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. And they're two nations that will be both expecting to do well. So Malawi and Ethiopia in the other game will be hoping that one of them wins and that the other one could get a win. So for example, if the Egyptians were to win and Malawi were to win, that will close it down to three points. It's still a huge ask. Um, if Guinea and Egypt draw before Malawi and Ethiopia kick off, the group's done. Finito classed out here. So... I think they might as well play out a draw. I, just play the draw. Players are tied to the end of pre-season. A lot of those Egyptian and Guinea players do play in Europe. Get 10 points each. And then the Malawi-Ethiopia game becomes a dead rubber. This is a good game. Central African Republic against Angola. Um, now, interestingly enough, this game is also taking place in Douala. And that's on June 17, which is why Algeria have to play on June 18, if you're interested. So, Central African Republic have given themselves a huge opportunity, particularly through Mafuta, 
to qualify for the competition because they are on seven points, Ghana are on eight and Angola are on five. So if Central African Republic were to win home against Angola, and this is a good new emerging Angola, narrowly lost to Ghana later on, harsh on them, Semenya with a goal, a lot of Portuguese born players. If Mafuta, Kondogbia, these sorts of players can get the win for Central African Republic and then Ghana go and beat Madagascar, the group's done. And Angola, despite having a decent side now, that would be one of the biggest teams to probably miss out on this tournament on the whole. Again, because it's in Douala, uh, CAR are not really at home. So Angola could do there and do some damage. I think this might be quite a good game. Um, Ghana should be fairly comfortable against Madagascar, you'd think, even though that Ghana are the away side. But Madagascar haven't got a hope in hell of qualifying for the AFCON. So Ghana really will have sort of the motivation to, to go to Madagascar and win. But... I can't call that Central African Republic Angola game, even in Douala. There's going to have to be some real quality there to, uh, to sort that one out. Zambia host Ivory Coast. Again, a bit pointless. Ivory Coast have qualified as hosts. Zambia need just the point officially to qualify for the competition. Comoros will probably go and smash Lesotho in the other game, but it doesn't really matter. Zambia got a six-point lead over, over Comoros with two games to go. I don't think we're going to see the... Uh, the Comorian magic that we did at the last competition where Comoros got further than Algeria. They'll probably beat the Soto in Johannesburg, but Zambia will be looking to make it to the tournament under Avram Grant, who's been in an AFCON final before with Ghana. So those two games to look out for. Equatorial Guinea will take on Tunisia, and uh, Botswana will take on Libya in the other game. Again, Tunisia have qualified for the competition. Equatorial Guinea, it's a very similar situation. Of course, they're playing in Malabo. They just need a point, and Libya and Botswana won't go to the competition. So that would make Libya-Botswana a dead rubber if Equatorial Guinea got anything out of this game. I'd be surprised and impressed, and pleasantly impressed, if Tunisia do go to Malabo and win. But I think we can safely say we'll be seeing Equatorial Guinea and we'll be seeing Tunisia out of this one. Commiserations to Libya. They won't be making it. South Africa against Morocco. Um, in Johannesburg, again, Morocco, they're already there. Haven't even needed to break sweat in this three-team group. Bit of a waste of time, to be honest. Um, two teams out of three go through. South Africa just need probably one more point to make it officially them to the tournament. Although I think, really, looking at it, buying a huge swing in goal difference, Liberia are out of their situation. So if South Africa get anything, and in fact they have the head-to-head -head over Liberia, the group's basically done. So even if South Africa got smashed 10-0 by Morocco, um, they'd both be going there. So I'm looking forward to seeing South Africa at the tournament. I'm looking forward to seeing Morocco at the tournament. And hopefully that'll be a good game between the two sides. I can't see... I mean, Liberia don't even play in this match day. The whole... I mean, why they put Zimbabwe in the group just to take them out? I don't really get it. Complete waste of time. Benin, Senegal. And uh, this is an interesting group. So Benin at the moment, I've only got two points. But my understanding is that in one of the games between Benin and Rwanda, I believe uh, Rwanda fielded an ineligible player, someone that was meant to be suspended, but they used. So Benin are probably going to get another two points and be gifted a 3-0 win, which will give them confidence. And hosting Senegal is still going to be difficult, of course, but in Cotonou, anything can happen. And that will put pressure on Mozambique to go to Rwanda and get something. So I expect Mozambique to go to Rwanda and win. Benin, even with those extra points, probably still need something at home to Senegal. And then the last game, having to go away to Mozambique. Despite that, I still fully back um, Mozambique to qualify. We'll see, though. We could see Mozambique, of course, had a good chance, didn't they, in Algeria's group. See them again. Uh, Tanzania against Niger in uh, Dar es Salaam. Of course, the game in Algeria's group now. Of course, Algeria have four points out of four. And close to that game, we'll be building up to it in more detail, inshallah. But second place... Tanzania, Uganda and Niger all in the running. Tanzania should be beating Niger at home. They should be really if there were any chance of getting out of this. Uganda against Algeria. Now again, Algeria have to go to Douala for this game. But Uganda need the points under the Serbian manager who took them to AFCON before. Last time he took the Ugandans to AFCON, Algeria won the competition in 2019. It'll be a competitive game. I know Algeria are there and they've been missing some players. But Uganda need the win, so that'd be interesting. Um, if Uganda get something against us... I think they'll make the tournament because uh, we'll have Tanzania in the last game uh, at home. So they're not going to get anything there, wherever, whether that be in Baraki or whatever. So um, Uganda, if they get a draw at home to Algeria, I think they'll celebrate it like they'll go to the tournament, to be honest. Um, 
This is an interesting group with Eswatini, Togo, Cape Verde and Burkina Faso. For me, Togo have been an absolute diabolical mess. Um, they're at Eswatini. I think it's still done. Even though Cape Verde are playing Burkina Faso, those are the two teams that will be going to the tournament. Cape Verde just need probably another point and they're there. Burkina Faso already there or thereabouts. You know Burkina Faso, they're the household names of AFCON. They go to Cape Verde away. Um, it'd be interesting to see if Cape Verde can beat them. Of course, another team that got to the last 16 of the last Africa Cup of Nations. I think they'll get something against Burkina Faso. So, um, another shocking qualification campaign from Togo. It has to be said. Fastly becoming one of my favourite groups, the Gabon, Sudan, Mauritania and DL Congo. Now, even though DL Congo, remember, just before March, they had no points. I still fully backed them to get back into this. They've got to go away to Gabon. Now... There's only three points set, set, separating top to bottom. But, ironically now, Gabon have reintroduced Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to their national team. So, if Aubameyang fires and gets Gabon the win at home to Dial Congo, which is why I think they've brought them in, I think Gabon qualify. Of course, Dial Congo have to go to Gabon and get a result to stay in the running. And, of course, whatever happens in the other game between Sudan and Mauritania, which is a very emotional game because it's a big political situation in Sudan. There's not been much football there. Uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the people of Sudan. Sudan facing Mauritania. There's, there's no way that game can, of course, happen in Sudan. So it'll probably happen in, I don't know, maybe Morocco, Agadir, something like that. They've got a lot behind them. There are a lot of people will be rooting Sudan to do well, even people not from Sudan. And um, I hope they can beat Mauritania. I don't think Mauritania will qualify. If Sudan beat them, there'll be a nine points from five games. That would put them in a real driving seat because if Gabon beat the Al Congo in the other game and Sudan win this, Sudan will be at the Africa Cup of Nations. And what a, what a moment, you know, finally something to celebrate for the people of Sudan. And then, of course, you've got Burundi and Namibia. Now, the shock in here is Cameroon are not home and dry yet. Burundi are playing Namibia. Cameroon don't actually play a game in this match day, which is good. We get a break from flipping Toko Akambi and all these mugs that have annoyed me. Um, funnily enough, Onana would have a Champions League final though in between that. Burundi, Namibia. Now, if Burundi beat Namibia, then Burundi and Cameroon will both be on four points going in to the final game where Cameroon would take on Burundi, which means if, and it's a big if, right, <laughs> that last game, if Burundi won this against Namibia at home, which is, you know, not impossible. I think the game will be in Tanzania, but it's at home. Um, if they went to Cameroon on the last day and got something, we might see Cameroon eliminated from the Africa Cup of Nations after hosting one and all that nonsense with Gassama. For Cameroon to not go, I'm not saying they're not going to qualify, but they've got, they've got, if Burundi win this, it'll be Namibia 5, Cameroon 4, Burundi 4, with a game to go. So, and they could draw that last game and all teams could be on five points. It's an unbelievable position. Of course, Kenya got kicked out. Um, but we would have to see what happens. I'm excited because AFCON is starting to shape up. Of course, you know, we love it. Uh, third AFCON covering on this channel, of course, Algeria one and Senegal one. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens. Starting to get an idea what the teams are going to be looking like. We know Salah's going to be at another AFCON. Marne will be there. Mahrez, um or Bamiang if, if Gabon get there. So really, really exciting. Uh, let me know your predictions in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the games. I'll see you next time.